Hey guys, and welcome back to part three of the Clean Topology series. Today we're going to be talking about tessellation, uh, what it is, why you want to get it proper, and how that will help you out. Okay, here we go. Okay guys, well, we're in uh, Maya 2018, and as mentioned, we're going to be talking about tessellation. Now, in order to understand what we're talking about, you first need to know what tessellation is, right? Okay, so I'll just uh, drag in an image here, and uh, this is something off of uh, Wikipedia. And basically what tessellation is, is um, when you cover a flat surface with the geometrical patterns, like uh, circles, squares, triangles, and so forth, in a way that there are no gaps and no overlap, all right? So how does that apply in a 2D, 3D world? Well, for example, we're in Maya. Let's uh, take a um, simple cube here and let's hit Control A to open up the attribute editor. And let's go in and give this five by five by five subdivisions. Now, if I zoom in and I get a face, you will see, oh, my soft select's on, sorry. You will see that I got a flat surface on top here. It's covered in squares and they're all geometrical patterns, okay? And there are no gaps and no overlaps. Okay, perfect. So what do you care, right? Well, the reason why proper tessellation is so important is because if it's not, it will uh, create uh, problems. And I'll give you an example. I'm just gonna go in and select this area right here. And I'm gonna hit Control E to extrude, hit W to pull out, and there we go. Now, in itself, if I had this object and I would uh, put, a, let's say, a blue Lambert on or whatnot and render it out, I'd be fine, right? But what if I want to bend this guy? So I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to go to deform, uh, nonlinear, and bend. Uh, rotate that bend handle. There we go. So let's do that. If I look at the shape here, you see that it doesn't look right at all. And it doesn't look right for the simple reason that there are no vertices here to allow the bend, okay? Because that's off. Now, this is a pretty obvious one, but I'll show you one that's much more subtle, okay? So let's delete that. Let's take another cube. Let's go in and uh, put in, once again, let's do 10 by 10 by 10. There we go. Let's say I am, I'm done with my model. I import it into ZBrush or Mudbox or, I don't know, Substance Painter, and I want to uh, put some scratches on this, okay? I want to uh, deform the surface, if you will. So I'm going to right click, go to Vertex, take one of these vertices. I'll hit B for Soft Select, so that's my impacted area. Let's hit W and move that. Now, you can see that there's an evenly spaced deformation, and that kind of makes sense, okay? I'm going to hit Control Z to go back. Now let's go in here and just get rid of a few of these edges. So turn off B for a sec, go to edge. And I'm just gonna go in here and get rid of a bunch of these edges. So now suddenly you can see that this is way off, right? Let's try that again, hit B and move. And suddenly you see it's looking totally different, right? It looks off for the simple reason that you don't have that proper tessellation. All right, so now that we understand the principles of all this, uh, let's look at a practical application and let's uh, look at how to fix it, okay? So I'm gonna go in and open up a model that I did a very long time ago. And in itself, um, the mesh isn't wrong. I mean, it's clean. Um, I have some triangles here, but that's fine. Uh, game engine triangulate anyway. I have some triangles here to get rid of that end gone. So uh, you would say it's a clean mesh. But you already see the problem here that the subdivision level here is quite dense and even at the handle. And here you basically don't have a lot going on. Now, I probably wouldn't bend that blade, but let's say I want to put some scratches to it or whatnot. Or even worse, let's put some scratches on the blade going all the way over to the handle. The model is going to respond very differently in this area and in that area. That's kind of the whole idea, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to fix that. And in this case, we're going to do that in ZBrush. All right. Now, before we do, we need to do a little preparation here uh, for the simple reason that once you add a subdivision, you will uh, smooth edges as it calculates averages. Okay. 
So uh, let's say at the end of this blade right here, I put in a little edge loop and I'll hit five so you can see it better, or four, sorry. Yeah, you can see that I put one right there. Uh, for the same reason that if I were to hit three right now to smooth it out, it would round those edges, okay? So once you're satisfied with that, what you can do is uh, export this. So uh, I could use GoZ, but I'm not. I'm gonna go to uh, File and uh, let's see, we'll do Export Selection. I'll just uh, overwrite this guy. Okay, so I want to load up my sword. <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, to Import and on my desktop and this is my sword this is a test so we'll just ignore that that's my sword we're going to open that up and i'm going to left click and drag on my screen and there you have it and i'm going to click on edit so it will become an editable mesh all right okay so uh, let's look at our uh, subdivisions i'm going to go to poly f right here you can see nothing has changed just yet all right and let's fix that so we're going to go to geometry now, a couple of things I want to do is I want to make sure that those edges stay in place, as I mentioned before. So I'm going to go to crease and I'm going to go to crease all. And that way, when I do that, it's not going to deform everything. And now it's simply a matter of going into the Z remesher, right? Now, uh, let's see where to go right here. Z remesher, you choose a level. And in this case, I'm at five, but let's do, uh, let's see. We'll do 3.9, that's okay. And that's my target poly count. And then we'll simply gonna hit Z remesher. As we do that, you see that it immediately has an impact on my model. And what I'll do is I'll export it and I'll put it next to my original in Maya and you can see the difference, okay? So uh, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna go to export. I'm gonna select my sword OBJ clean that I already had and I'm gonna override it. Okay guys, we're back in Maya, and here you see uh, our top model is our, uh, re, our Z Mesher uh, model from um, ZBrush. You can see that we have a perfectly divided uh, you know, subdivision and tessellation, and here is our original, okay? So hopefully this video explained to you why it is important and why you need to pay attention to that, and an example of how to fix that if you have that problem, okay? Um, yeah, that's it. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know. Uh, hit that like button. And if you don't want to miss out on future videos, make sure you subscribe. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe. Okay. See you guys next time. Bye.